Howdy, y'all. It's Fran with the developer relations team here at WP Engine. And I'm super stoked because in today's video, we're going to talk about code syntax highlighting in headless WordPress. Now, there's an issue with the native core WordPress block for code. Let me show you what it is. Now, I'm over in my WP admin and I'm in the post edit page and I've just put some sample data a title called code block and then I selected the code block and in the code block I just put some JSX this is essentially a, a react function that displays a loading page and state on a browser and if I visit the page let's see what the issue is so I'm going to preview this in my tab and as you can see the native WordPress code block doesn't support syntax highlighting. And this is a problem for developer focused sites or tutorials where reading and understand code snippets is key. Now, the shortcoming of the native code block often leads devs to look for other solutions that support code syntax highlighting. Now, recently we did a project on my team and we did a, some research on a few options, including the syntax highlighting code block with server side rendering and code block pro. Now we found code block pro to offer the highest quality syntax highlighting. It provides tons of features, customization options, and it even supports a number of popular VS code themes to choose from giving code snippets a nice pro look. Uh, let's get started with the guide and dive right in. Before we get into the nitty gritty, let's just go over a few prerequisites that you want to have checked off. You should have a basic knowledge of Next.js 14, a Next.js boilerplate project that uses the app router, and a basic knowledge of WP GraphQL and headless WordPress. Now, I do have some links that I'm going to leave in the description of the uh, video on YouTube uh, with a link to the exact repository that I created for this tutorial. And then you can visit the Next.js docs as well, and I'll leave all of that collateral in the YouTube description. All right, now let's follow the steps to install and activate CodeBlock Pro. We're in the WP admin right now, and I'm on my dashboard page. Let's go to plugins, and there it is, the plugins page. Now, once we're on the plugins page here, we're going to add new plugin. And then in the search bar, we're going to search for code block pro, hit enter. And it populates right away. This is by Kevin Batdorf. And I've already installed and activated the plugin. So it will look like this on the installed plugins page for you. There it is, code block pro. Now that this is activated, let's create a new post in WordPress. Uh, WordPress. Let's head over to the post page. Hit add new post. And then we've got our block editor up. I'm gonna just write a dummy title, code block pro sample. And then I'm gonna add a block and it should say code pro here. There is the icon for it. When I click on that, it's going to give me the block for coding. And we have the syntax highlighted code block. Now I'm going to go ahead and paste a react function that I've already um, made and you've seen earlier in the video. And there it is. Now let's examine the panel on the right. And notice that there is a bunch of configurations that you can do. Now for this walkthrough, I chose the Dracula soft theme right here. And then I'm going to set my footer to the simple string start. So let's go over to footer. Whoops. Close that out. Let's go to footer. And here it is simple string start, which is the current. And this will display the kind of language code that is on the bottom right here. And then let me show you the highlighting feature line by line. 
if you go to line settings, click on line highlights, and then you can just go like, we'll do one and two. And right away, it just works. It highlights the lines that you specify. And stoked, that's it. This is what you have to do. And if simple syntax highlighting and formatting are all you need, as well as displaying the programming language in your post, you're done. Now let's get this to render on our decoupled front end in Next.js 14. I'm already in my VS code here, and we're using the app router in Next.js 14. Now you should already have a boilerplate spun up. And what we're gonna look at first is the CSS file. So we're gonna go to our globals.css file, which I'm already in. And here's the comment of the line highlighting for code block pro blocks. Now, you need to add this into your globals.css file. And this is going to ensure, let me just highlight this here. Whoops. All these code blocks here. Now, this is going to ensure that the highlighting is properly formatted and it creates a more readable and accessible presentation for longer code blocks. Now, I'm just going to command save to make sure that's saved. And then I'm going to go to my terminal here. And then we're going to go to the browser off localhost 3000. And here is my home page, and I have uh, links to route to a single post detail page already set up. So I click on that, and boom, let me enlarge the screen here. Super stoked about this. Now, out of the box, the plugin with some CSS allowed us to easily display code highlighting and the programming language right down here in a nice readable way. We could stop at just installing the plugin and adding the CSS to our front end app to get the formatting and highlighting, but let's take it a step further. Further, Let's implement a copy to clipboard feature whereby users can click a button to copy the code within the code snippet to their clipboard and then, um, and then paste it in any document they choose to. Back in my WP admin, there's a couple of things we need to do in order to take this a step further. We need to install and activate WP GraphQL and WP GraphQL content blocks. So in the plugins page, I'm gonna navigate over there. And then when you hit add new plugin, WP GraphQL should populate when you search for it. And I've already installed and activated it. There it is. Okay, and then, for WP GraphQL content blocks, you need to go to the uh, repository page from GitHub and download the zip file off that. So I'm gonna navigate over to the GitHub repository page for WP GraphQL content blocks, which is here. Then go over down to this right-hand side to the latest release, which is v4.2.0. And then here is the actual zip file that you want to download. And I've already done this. So back on my plugins page uh, of installed plugins, it's already installed here after I downloaded the zip file right here. Now that we're all hooked up and set up that we turn our WordPress backend into a GraphQL server with WP GraphQL and extended it with WP GraphQL content blocks to get that block data out. But let's test it and query for the code block pro data. So let's do that in the GraphQL IDE here. I'm gonna open this up. And I already have a query that I've made right here. And as shown, I'm gonna press play and this should return all the posts along with the code block pro data, including the attributes we were asking for, the program, programming language, HTML rendered code, um, snippets, line numbers, copy button, etc. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that data. So if I scroll down and I'm trying to find the editor blocks field, 
I think I just passed it right there, okay? So once we are on this editor blocks field, we should be starting to see that block data. And here is the code from the block. And here's the rendered HTML right here. There's the copy button, which is set to true. It's a Boolean. And then the language number is JavaScript. Stoked, it worked. I'm back in my Visual Studio code. And now that we have the data, we need to render the code block in our Next.js front end. Let's go ahead and navigate right here where I'm at to the dynamic route file, which is the URI, and then the page.jsx file. Now, this is a long code block, so I'm going to go over this line by line. Starting at the top, we have our use client directive since we are importing and using the use state hook in React, which needs to run on the client. Then we import our globals.css file for the styling. Following that, we have an asynchronous function that's a GraphQL query to fetch the post code and block data. Now this function does define a GraphQL query. It fetches the post data specifically targeting the Kevin Batdorf code block pro block and it contains attributes such as the language, code, and copy button. Now the URI is passed into the GraphQL query down here to fetch the correct post. And then let's highlight this part here. And what's happening is this query is then sent to the GraphQL API using the fetch API with headers defining the request as post and the body as JSON. Now the response is parsed as JSON and the post data is returned for rendering. Next, let's go down to the post details component and let me highlight that entire code block here and we'll go over it. Now, this is a component that's fetching the post data using the get post function, passing the post URI as a parameter. Following that, the post title is displayed using a simple h1 tag. And then the editor blocks field is mapped over and the function checks if the block name is Kevin Batdorf forward slash code dash block dash pro. Now, if it is, it renders the code block display component passing in the blocks attributes and the HTML. Now, the next part is the code block display component. So let me first go over the function part of this component right here. We're going to highlight this. <laughs> and what's going on here is the com component is using the use state hook to manage whether the copy button was clicked. Now, this means that after the copy action is triggered, the copied message will be displayed for three seconds before resetting back to the original copy button state. Now, after that, the handle copy function uses the clipboard API to copy the code contained in attributes.code to use to the user's clipboard and it checks if the API is available and logs an error if not. Now down here on this JSX, the rendered HTML of the code block is then injected into the DOM using dangerously set inner HTML, which is necessary because the content comes from WordPress in HTML format. If the block has a copy button attribute, the copy button is conditionally displayed. Now, additionally, the programming language is displayed at the bottom of the block if it's available. Now, the last thing we need to do is add a function that includes the components for rendering the SVG icons, which are down here. Here's this function. And I'm going to go over. Yeah, it's essentially what, what's happening is the copy icon here is displayed. Uh, by default, after the user clicks on the button to copy the code, that SVG is hidden and swapped out with the checkmark icon to indicate that the code snippet was successfully copied. And <clears throat> the rest of the function is all down here. Now, the final thing we need to do before testing our code block page is to update the CSS to collectively enhance the presentation of the code uh, block by ensuring the elements are properly spaced, visually appealing, and interactive with the copy button. Now, this um, let's go over to the CSS file here in globals.css, 
and I've already added the CSS necessary, but essentially um, this setup complements the functionality provided in the JavaScript code for copying code snippets. Um, you can style it however you like, but I chose it to do it this way. And let's go ahead and then um, test the page. So I'm gonna go to my terminal. I'm gonna start up the development server and this is gonna come off port 3000. So I'm gonna go back to my browser, go off localhost 3000. Go to CodeBrock Pro Sample page. Nice. So as you can see, it's looking better. The entire actual code block is in the highlighted block with the JavaScript language down there, labeling it. And there is our copy button. Now let's go ahead and test this. I'm gonna click the copy button, it check marks, and then after three seconds, it goes back to the copy box. And then I'm gonna go over to a random document. And then if I paste it, there it is. I was able to copy and paste from my headless app into a Google Doc in this case. Stoked. Now there is another thing you could do, instead of embedding the entire code block, which was long, of logic directly into a single page file, it's a good practice to create separate components specifically for handling code block pro blocks. Um, it'll enhance code readability, reusability, and maintainability by isolating the code blocks functionality. And then you can easily import this component into any page that requires the code block such as your page.jsx file without cluttering the page's primary logic. So essentially you could just take like the logic, put it in a component and then import it from there. Well, that's all folks. So in the end, syntax highlighting and copy to clipboard functionality are valuable enhancements to the code snippets on your headless WordPress sites dealing with this type of documentation site or engineering site. Now by leveraging the CodeBlock Pro plugin and WP GraphQL, we were able to query and render code blocks with ease. Now this approach improves readability and user experience, allowing visitors to easily copy code snippets directly from your posts. The combination of server-side rendering with client-side interactivity using Next.js along with a clean, simple styling approach ensures that you can maintain a visually appealing and functional code block display. As always, I'm super stoked to hear your feedback and see what headless projects you're building. Hit us up in our Discord, and until then, happy coding.